I'm Jesse Robertson from the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and this is Alaska Voices, a place for communities to connect through conversation in order to build a better tomorrow for Alaskans and the world. Originally, I grew up in Gakona, Alaska. Tyonic. Egypt. Idaho. Rampart. St. Lawrence Island. St. Paul. And I'm here with my student, my science buddy, my teacher, my homie. I'm his daughter. My name is Katie Volano Spellman. I am 36 years old, and I'm sitting here with my mentor and collaborator, Krista Mulder. My name is Krista Mulder. I'm 49 years old, and the relationship to my partner is I am her current collaborator and former advisor twice over. Krista, when did you first find me? You Did I find you or did you find me? Um, we met each other in the greenhouse. Oh, that's you, right. You were washing samples. And I just spent time working with two really hardcore ladies, and I was like, I want to be one of those hardcore ladies that drives a boat down the Tanana River and slugs through the mud all day and gathers <laughs> I, I do remember that one of the main selling points on you was you were really tough in the field and you could stand, <laughs> you know, slugging through the muck, Yeah, uh, which is an important quality in a grad student. I knew coming in as a grad student that I didn't want to do science in a vacuum. I wanted it to be meaningful for people and and that helped keep my heart filled, you know, because you can get lost in the spreadsheets, and which I enjoy, <laughs> but but to know that, that getting lost in the spreadsheets is going to help somebody someday. You called me up when you got a giant grant, and you said, do you want to do the perfect project for you, for your PhD? It was going to be some sort of training for educators, and then you came up with the idea of turning it into a citizen science project, and we spent about a week running around looking for different sites where we could put out these plots where we had lots of blueberries and cranberries. And I remember the time we went down the extremely little bushy road that uh-huh. scratched the side of our cars. I remember there was the guy who was like cutting logs there and he said, oh, little ladies. Yeah. And he walked over to the side of the trail and he pulled down a birch tree and said, you guys just drive over this. Just don't tell your boss. And you ran, <laughs> leaned out of the window and go, she is the boss. It's a half a million dollar project. <laughs> But during those drives, because we spent a lot of the, a lot of time together driving yep. to get to to our sites, like that's when I think you did probably most of your like mentoring. Well, I think it's a lot like parenting, really. You know, every kid is different, and every graduate student is different. But when it works well, again, it's like watching your kids do better than you did at something. You know, like I watch my daughter bake cakes that are much, much better than anything I could possibly <laughs> bake. And, you know, it makes you feel really good. So, you know, when you just got a big grant, that made me feel awesome because like, yeah, look at what she just did. Thanks, Krista. <laughs> I'm taking notes because someday I'll have to mentor people, you know, and because my immediate reaction would be to invite people over to my house like you do, you know, Mm -hmm. like we're going to start the field day with a fresh cup of coffee (laughs) at my house. I think the other thing is you're unusual because you came in already having a very strong sense of social justice and how important that was and how this was going to be part of what you were going to do. And I mean, it is, right? It's part of the citizen science work that you're doing now. It's melding science and education and social justice, particularly in rural villages. For me, I kept my scientific part of my life and my personal life very, very separate for a very long time. I mean, I've always been interested in child welfare, but it was a separate part of my life. And it's only now that I'm starting to fit those pieces together and say, hey, you know, maybe I can do that and can be a scientist and I can bring those two sets of talents together. And that's in part your influence because you've been doing that right from the start. Wow, Krista. So. Oh, my gosh. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> We've built each other's confidence and brought each other different skills. And Yep. Yeah. And we have complimentary skills. I yeah. think that's why we're still, you know, what, we counted them yesterday or the day before. We were still working on four projects together. Collaborators for life, Krista. That's right. You know, I mean, some of the other things that I'm doing like my involvement in the fostering science program where we're working with kids in foster care. And we're thinking about kids in foster care because they often don't have any opportunities to participate in summer programs, especially once they get about age 12 or so, because when you're five years old, you don't need to have any skills to go to a camp. But by the time you get 13, 14, 15 years old, you actually need to have some background usually in the type of camp you go to. And so we thought, well, what if we had a camp for kids and it's sort of a science education slash adventure camp. It's really a lot of natural history is what it turned into this summer. And one of the things that emerged too was that each kid sort of 
found one area that they were particularly interested in, whether yeah. that was trapping animals or one kid got really excited about soils. But it was really cool to see each one of them go, oh, this is something I'm really interested in, I can do. And to, to know that science isn't something that you just have to memorize and that you feel like you're not good at in a large classroom setting, but to be like, this is science and this is awesome. Like the same things that sparked us. Like, I want to be one of those ladies that's dirty every day and slugging through places without trails and people as real people, scientists as real people and that care about them, you know. Krista, I want to thank you for being my mentor since the year 2005, right? I think that's right. Yeah, it's been a long time. Well, thank you for being part of my life for that entire time as well. Yeah. Plus, I've got two watching your kids grow up. They're going to be part of my life. Yeah. Your husband. Here's that's to many great. more years of collaboration, Krista. <laughs> We're high-fiving. We're high-fiving. Yeah. <laughs> Alaska Voices builds bridges by creating a space where community members, friends, policymakers, and scientists can share stories and place-based knowledge. This project was developed in partnership with StoryCorps and was funded by the Alaska Climate Adaptation Science Center. Additional funding was provided by the University of Alaska Fairbanks Chancellor through a generous gift from the Bentley Family Trust. If you are interested in more conversations or information, please visit our website at alaskavoices.org.